The purpose of this video is to, video three, is to show you how to display your project after you've entered it. To do this, you should have watched video two that shows you how to actually create the project schedule. And at the end of, uh, not project two, video two, you would have created a uh, schedule in Microsoft Project. I have provided a starter file in case you want it um, right down here, exercise two finish exercise 3 starter file for people that have access to it which shows you what the project looks like your dates might look different than the one that you the one here and the one you created in video 2 but that doesn't matter for what we're going to do in this video so <clears throat> so what we're going to do is show you in this video how to display your project this is a very small project so i mean this is probably the best way to display it to people that want to know what your project is but for very large projects um, to show the whole thing fully expanded like this is overwhelming so you need these techniques I'm going to show you in order to guide the project team the first thing you might want to do is go to Gantt chart and then go to more views and then go to calendar see how this created a calendar that shows when each activity is supposed to happen on the calendar that people are used to seeing. I find this method is very good for people who don't know a lot about projects and just need to be guided as to when things should start and when they should finish. So then we go back to Gantt chart and that's way one. The other thing you want to do is you want to use the outline buttons right here. See how you've got options? Level 1, level 2, level 3. This is level 1, this is level 2, and then everything in the detail down here is considered level three that's indented the absolute most. So if I go to outline level two, that collapses this whole project to the machine one activities, the machine two activities, the testing line, which is on the same level, and then the project is complete. And for a large project, this really helps you get the big picture of what your project is all about. To take off that filter, you go down to outline level three, and then everything comes back the way it was. The next thing you might want to do is filter this by different aspects of your project. And one that I like to do is go to filter. Remember, I'm on the view tab here. Filter, go down to milestones. And you see how that gave me the summary task, but it also put the milestones as to when each activity, each phase of the project is complete. Machines 1 and done is done on the 30th. Machine 2 is done on the 5th. And the project is completed on the 6th. Now, if you want to take that off, go to No Filter. Another way of showing your project is to use this filter function, but only show the critical tasks. So if I go to Filter, and I click on Critical here, these are the critical tasks. Now, you can't see that they are critical unless you go Format, click on Critical Tasks. That will make them red. Uh, make them stand out compared to all the other non-critical tasks that are normally in blue. You could then take off that critical mar uh, filter and go view no filter. See, and that puts me right back where I was with those critical activities highlighted. If you don't want those critical activities highlighted, then go to format and uncheck critical tasks. The other thing you might want to do is when you're when you create a report it can, as I said, be overwhelming to give everyone a massive project that has like 60, 70, 80 tasks in it. Their eyes will glaze over due to the detail. So after you've shown them the level two, if I go to view, outline, level two version, or the one with the milestones shown as well, filter by milestones, um, whatever you've shown them here at the outset to get the big picture, you might then want to press the expand button here and then just focus in on the machine one tasks and explain that to them. And then when you are done that, show them another diagram of machine two and then describe that. We would call this progressive elaboration because you're elaborating on the conceptual version of this project that you gave when you went down to the outline level two um, view. And the last thing you is useful is to go to view, go to table, and then go to schedule. This shows you when each task should start at its earliest, when it should finish, when its late start is, when its late finish is, which I never give to the project team. I always give them just that much. 
Otherwise, they will take the late finishes dates, and that's those are for me. In case something goes wrong, those little bits of slack and buffering. And if you pull this across like this, um, this shows you what the slack is in every particular project as well. In this case, you can see these tasks have absolutely no slack. These ones have five days of slack, meaning they're non-critical. But this is another view you can use in order to display your project in a way that is digestible to people, particularly if the project is small. In my experience, it's best not to give them the entire project. Once they buy into the entire schedule, I normally will give them a section of it to work on over the next two weeks so they can focus on the dates it contained therein. And that's it. That is how you display your schedule in Microsoft Project. And that will be helpful for anyone who has a large project and needs to condense it in ways that other people can understand. Thanks.